Yo, 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 what's up guys? It's your boy B. Lee here back again with another video. I'm back with the journey to Godzilla King of the Monsters, which is being released May 31st of this year. So, this video is going to be all about the Heisei period, which is literally my favorite period of the whole Godzilla franchise. Starting with... Godzilla 1984, The Return of Godzilla, which also has an American adaptation called Godzilla 1985, which stars Raymond Burr, because since Godzilla, since Godzilla 1984 is a direct sequel to the original Gojira, Godzilla 1985 plays as a direct sequel to the American adaptation, Godzilla King of the Monsters. Next, we have Godzilla vs. Biollante. Um, I always wonder, do I say that right? Biollante, Biollante, but yeah. This one, double feature, Blu-ray, Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah and Godzilla vs. Mothra, Battle for Earth. And this was the start of like this mini trilogy within the period Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2. And another double feature I have Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla and Godzilla vs. Destroyer. So, beginning with Godzilla 1984, the return of Godzilla, like I said, is a direct sequel to the original Gojira and basically they they're taking Godzilla back to its main roots like a complete force of nature they're they're still using the nuclear aspect they're using Godzilla as this metaphor about that nuclear destruction that happened and yes this movie was great to me um this was the first time Godzilla used animatronics on his face. Godzilla looked more menacing. His roar was much more deeper and darker. Like the whole, the, the entire thing I like about the Heisei period is this, this period is much more grittier. It's, it's darker. It, it feels like more is at stake with this period and Godzilla He's no longer this friendly creature that was in the Showa period. He's now like this anti-hero. Like he's still this person that can wreak not person, but he's still this creature that can wreak havoc on Japan. But Japan can still rely on him to take on other threats that come, and that's what I like about this franchise right here. When well, this period, the Heisei period. So, at the end of Godzilla 1984, they lead him, you know, back to his resting place in that volcano. And then, here comes Godzilla versus Biollante. And Godzilla Biollante came about um, because they wanted Godzilla to get back to the fighting. They wanted Godzilla back in the arena. So, what they did was they hosted a contest, actually for people to hand in story scripts, you know, like ideas of what the next Godzilla movie should be. And that's how this film came along. And basically what happened, the events in God Godzilla 1984 is kind of a bit of a callback because they find like a piece of Godzilla's skin, his scale, whatever. And basically they use this in kind of like a biology project. And Long story short, because of Godzilla's DNA, they use it in this kind of biological thingamajig and Biolante is born and Godzilla has to fight that. And at the end of the movie, um, Biolante, you know, is destroyed and blah, blah, blah. So, after that, even though the film got positive reviews it still didn't do much in the box office so Toho wanted to bring back a character from the previous period 
and that what came Godzilla versus King Ghidorah Godzilla's number one nemesis and that movie was off the chain I, I, I honestly think that's my favorite one um, of the Heisei period but uh, in this one they actually tweak his origin a little bit um, he was basically this dinosaur that was still alive during World War II and he was killed and because of the radiation that came you know after that he became Godzilla the King of the Monsters and I also read up that this movie caught a little controversy because of the way that the American and Japanese were um, depicted during the war and that got a little controversy um yeah that's I, I think that's like my favorite one Kodora he was off the chain in it I loved it um and because of the success of King and um Godzilla versus King Ghidorah they wanted um to bring back another monster from the um Showa period and they brought back Mothra in Godzilla vs. Mothra Battle for Earth where um they introduced Batra. Um yeah, Godzilla has to take down both of them, but Godzilla loses, unfortunately. Um, Batra's dead, but uh, yeah, Mothra still prevails. And this was actually the highest grossing film throughout the whole Heisei period. And correct me if I'm wrong, out of all three periods, that was the highest grossing film. Correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I know for sure that was the highest grossing film in the Heisei period. Now, the start of this, kind of, I call it a mini trilogy because of the storyline that goes on. Starting with Godzilla vs. Godzilla 2, they kind of plant this seed for Godzilla's death because Godzilla dies two movies later. And what happens is, you know, Godzilla... They um they bring back Mega Godzilla first of all because they see the success of previous monsters that coming back from the previous period, so they're like, okay, let's just keep bringing back these old monsters. So they brought back Mega Godzilla for the sequel, Mega Godzilla Two, and they introduce Godzilla Junior, um, which in this one they call Baby Godzilla. Yeah, Baby Godzilla, whatever whatever they call him in this and and in this one Rodan's back um, at the end of the movie Rodan is um, killed and I think Godzilla is like down and out so Rodan gives Godzilla the rest of his energy so he can take down Mega Godzilla and then after that Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla, which is, I think, my second favorite. I honestly believe Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla is my second favorite. But this film is actually a callback to Godzilla vs. Biolante because um, at the end of Godzilla vs. Biolante, um, Godzilla's DNA is sent up to space with it and, and Mothra. Yeah, because Mothra um, plays a part in this, too. And, man, what did they say in the movie? Like, it got their DNA with the radiation that was, like, in this black hole. It just created something unique. And that's how Space Godzilla was born. Um, I probably got that all wrong. Please forgive me. Um... But yeah, that movie was dope. Um, baby Godzilla is no longer a baby. He's now Little Godzilla. And this movie was actually supposed to be a start of like a mini series based on Little Godzilla. But I heard that never happened. Um, but yeah, at the end of that, you know, of course, Godzilla kills Space Godzilla. And now... 
for the tragic ending of Godzilla, Godzilla vs. Destroyer. Oh my gosh. When I first seen that movie, I cried at the end. As a kid, I cried. Because I was just like, oh no, Godzilla died. And you know, I was too young to like see like the promotion and all that. But this movie went through heavy promotion. Like, it was featured on CNN that Godzilla was dying and the whole world was like going crazy. Like, yo, you about to kill Godzilla? Um... But yeah, basically, Godzilla vs. Destroyer, his past comes back to haunt him. Um, because, you know, in the original Godzilla film, um, they killed Godzilla with the oxygen destroyer. So basically, because of that, three creatures rise up and they form this massive creature. Um... Well, first thing first, Godzilla is like on the brink of dying. Like, Godzilla absorbs so much radiation. Like, his heart now is like this nuclear reactor. And if he melts down, literally the whole world is gone. Like, he's literally like a ticking time bomb in his movie. And every time he's on screen, you're just like, oh my gosh, he can like die at any minute now. But... Long story short, you know, little Godzilla is no longer little. He's Godzilla Jr. But unfortunately, Destroyer kills Godzilla Jr. And, you know, um, you know, Godzilla, he kills Destroyer. But right before Godzilla dies, you know, the military, they freeze him enough to where the damage isn't that bad. He dies peacefully well not peacefully because you know he was probably in pain but yeah but because of all that radiation that Godzilla left it brought Godzilla Jr. back to life and that is the end of the Heisei period yes this period was short yes um much more shorter than the Showa period um this this series ignores every film in the show period except the original. I probably should have said that at the beginning of my video, but I hope you guys have common sense to know that I know that it was, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean. But, um, but yeah, this is definitely one of, well, not one, but this is definitely my favorite period throughout the whole Godzilla franchise, like, I love it. Like I said, it's darker, it's grittier. Godzilla's more menacing. His face is more menacing. You know, he just has this demeanor in this period to where he's just like, don't F with me. Please don't. And you can even see it in his face. Like, he's just like, ah, don't do it. Because I will F y'all up. Like, he has that demeanor. Like, in the show period, Godzilla was like, he had the friendly look, you know. As the movies went on, he was just friendlier and friendlier. Now, he's just like, yo, don't. Just don't. Please don't. Please don't. I will F you up. But what you guys think, um, like I said, I, I love this period of Godzilla. My favorite period. Oh, my favorites. It's hard to do a favorites because there's not really so many. I told y'all Godzilla vs. King Adora was my top favorite of the fran well not franchise, the period. Ah. Friggin'. I love the entire period. I love the entire period. Um the weakest though, I would have to say. The weakest. What's the weakest one? Um, man, I guess I guess I could say Godzilla 1984 was the weakest one because 
it wasn't no fighting in it. But I love all of them, though. That's the crazy thing. I love all of them. You know what? I love the whole period. The whole period is my favorite. End of story. Huh. <laughs> if you guys like my review, please drop a thumbs up. Subscribe, share, whatever you guys feel. And stay tuned. Because the next review will be 1998 Godzilla. I reviewed it before. But I need to watch it again to see do I need to make another review. But if not, I'm going to just repost my old review. But if I do a new review, look out for it. It's your boy B. Lee signing off.